in church um, church services we use words that may not be clear if you didn't grow up in the church so this this lesson is more about um, examining a little bit closely the idea of seeking God okay so let's get going on this uh, first off seeking God means I, I, I'm this lesson is really focused on on, on breaking these things in, in a simple way okay so put aside anything that you've heard about this kind of stuff and let's just look at the bare root of it seeking God is living for him Okay, Romans 12, 1 talks about this. Um, when you present your life as worship to God, um, it is worshiping him, um, which is um, not just our lifestyle, but also singing songs to him, um, verbally praising him in our hearts, being thankful for him. Um, it is, uh, we seek God through prayer and fasting. And fasting is when you give up uh, food, um, most commonly, sometimes it's things as well. It, uh, we it was in um, we talked about fasting in the 101, um, and we'll talk about it a little bit more in just a little bit. But um, so th through prayer and fasting, we seek God through studying His Word, um, not just reading it like a verse, but I mean really studying it, really trying to get to know it. Um, Revolving our thoughts, our actions, and our attitudes around him. This is, these are ways that we seek God. Um, so let's start. We'll, we'll kind of break these things down. And first off, we'll look at worship itself. So if you're filling in the blanks, it's living for him is the first fill in the blank. Worship does not have to be elaborate or weird. It, it's not, it's not uh, marching around the church or having Jericho marches where you march around a, a, a town. In fact, I would highly recommend that you never do that. <laughs> it's not dancing or clapping or singing. It's none of those things. Worship, worship is about my heart. And from the abundance of my heart come the songs. So... Once again, the object is not to sing words on a screen. The object is to seek after God with our hearts, really desire for more of him, really surrender our life to him, just desiring to honor him. And from that abundance of, of, of having an encounter with God and getting to know him, singing about it. Okay, So um, it doesn't have to be a certain routine, <laughs> um, you know, like... Well, every morning at 7 o'clock, I, I listen to two worship songs. Well, I mean, that, that's good and all, but it doesn't have to be um, a certain routine. And once again, it doesn't have to be a real elaborate. You don't have to prove yourself in worship. It doesn't have to be weird. Um, it doesn't have to be like, you know, the I already mentioned the, 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 the dancing. It doesn't have to be, you know, um, if you've ever been in a weird service, you know what I'm talking about, where everybody just kind of acts a little bit strange. Um, it is a lifestyle. That's the first bone blank there under the heading of worship. It's lifestyle. Um, it's more than songs. Um, but I will say that verbalizing focuses your attention. If you sing a song of worship, it's easier to think about what you're singing about. And uh, so it, it, songs do help. Um, worship starts in the heart and ends in the mouth. So giving is a form of worship. How we spend our money, that is worship. How we spend our day is worship. Um, to really worship God, we must submit to His will in our lives. To really worship God, we have to submit to His will, His way of doing things, and His kingdom, His kingdom way of doing things. Um, that's how we really find worship, because if we try and impress God, it's not going to work. So let's look at some uh, word meanings uh, that are used fairly commonly in the church. First off, worship. Worship means to honor or to serve. Um, praise means to thank, to confess, or to, to speak well of. So if you're praising God, you're thanking Him. You're um, confessing what He's done, or you know whatever. Um, you're speaking well of Him. Um, when people say amen, it means so let it be. I agree with whatever is being said. 
Um, hallelujah means praise the Lord. Um, Emmanuel is the miss fill in the blank there. Emmanuel. Um, it's either spelled I M M A N U E L or E M M A N U E L. It doesn't really matter. Um, and that means God with us. Um, Hosanna means save, we pray. It's a general cry for God to save. It's not really necessarily um, a direct translation so much as, you know, save me. Um, so when we talk about God being worthy, what does that mean? It means that he, um, he is able to receive. He is the only one who is worthy. See, the only one who does who is worthy of our praise and of our worship and as of our adoration is not a girl that we like, but God. God is worthy. He's the only one who is worthy. So then we say holy. Now, holy basically means that he's pure. He's separated from sin or imperfection. He is perfect. Um, so then when people say, he touched me, well, a lot of this has to do with a story from the Gospels. Um, but also there was a song in probably the 70s that um, that was the chorus, he touched me. And the idea is that the Holy Spirit did a work within your spirit. Um, maybe he brought you emotional healing, you know, um, whatever. It's just kind of, it's one of those things that sounds weird unless you've experienced it and then you're like, ah, I get it. I mean, it has nothing to do with um, physical touching like abuse or molestation or anything like that. I know that some of us come from different backgrounds, and it might be a little bit hard if you've ne to understand some things if you've never um, grown up in the church. Um, when we say have your way, um, that means let your kingdom come, let your will be done, let, uh, um, help us to act how you want us to act, help us to honor you with our lives. Um, when, we, when, we, when we raise our hands in worship, um, it, it, it's a sign of blessing, and it's a sign of dependence. Um, it's a sign of, of honor and um, surrender and, you know, just blessing the Lord. Um, if you've ever been at a concert, you've seen people reach out towards the guy, whoever's on the stage, it's, you know, trying to, trying to get a touch of someone or trying to get a touch of God. Um, and we're not going to read any of those passages, but um, it talks about raising your hands. Uh, purposes and effects. You, you know, I hope that at this point you've already started to have real encounters with God. Past going on Sunday morning and hear somebody talking about him where you are actually having encounters with God, where your devotional life is um, becoming more profitable. And if you're not at that place yet, then this class really isn't going to benefit you that much. You need to get into a place where you are having a strong devotional life and are growing and you are encountering God um, on a weekly if not daily basis. Um, so, okay, the reason that we worship is to give glory and honor to the Lord. It's to obey his word he told us to worship God and to worship him. Um, it's to focus our thoughts and attention on him, which helps us to feel better too. I mean, it, it's something that God tells us to do and it profits us by doing it. So he makes himself known through our times of worship that that just kind of gives you an idea of worship. Worship is very uh, important. Um, it, it's a very uh, basic part of Christianity, and it's a very important part of Christianity. So, um, if you try to be saved with just your head, you're going to miss out a lot of um, of what being a Christian is all about. So, prayer. It's not uh, prayer should never be a uh, should never be a show, and it shouldn't be done for the benefit of others. It should be a, a conversation between you and God. Um, but it should also, it, you shouldn't see it as meaningless. I know a lot of people nowadays don't think that prayer has much meaning. The Bible makes it absolutely clear if we ask God for something in his name, he will answer. Now what does that mean? It means according to his character and according to his will. For instance, if I pray, Lord, please give me a Porsche in the name of Jesus. 
that's not really in the name of Jesus because I haven't really asked according to his character and his will. Okay, let me show you an, a, a, a better prayer. Lord, I pray that you would send your Holy Spirit and touch the hearts of this community, that they would find you in a more real way than they've ever heard, and that you would touch them and let them know that you are real, and that you would help them to come to you and that you would soften their heart in the name of Jesus. Okay, well, is that according to his character and will? Yes, absolutely. God wants to save people. He wants to touch them. So when we pray for things that are according to God's will, you know, hey, he's going to answer in time and in his own way. If some, there are some things that he won't answer unless we pray for them, then there are some things he's going to answer either way. For instance, we don't have to pray for Jesus to come back again. He is coming back again. We don't have, we don't have to pray for God to remember us. Um, you know, when we die, God, remember that I died and, you know, take me to heaven because he's going to do that anyways. Um, sometimes we pray for things that God will always already is already doing, like, Lord, please don't, please hear my prayer. Please don't overlook me. And that's really okay. Um, but there are some things that he's going to answer regardless of whether you pray or not. Um, there are some things that he's going to answer only if you pray. And there's some things that even if you pray, he's not going to answer. And that's just how prayer works. Now, the thing is, we don't know, um, we don't always know which of those three categories our prayers fall into. So that's why it's important to pray and ask and let the rest of it, you know, fall into God's hands. So, um, on your sheet, uh, raise your hands to bless God and show dependence. Dependence is the fill in the blank. Okay, so, um, in Matthew 6, he talks about how to pray, and um, he, it's, you know, the it's called the Lord's Prayer. Uh, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Uh, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as is in heaven. Um, give us this day our daily bread. Um, forgive us our um, debts or our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Um, for yours is the kingdom and the glory and the power forever. Amen. Uh, okay, and then... Um, the other passage that is there on that sheet um, is from James 4, which I actually do want to read. James 4, 1 through 3. What is the source of quarrels and conflicts among you? Is not is not the source of your pleasures that wage war in your members? You lust and do not have, so you commit murder. You are envious and cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. Some prayers are only given because you ask for them. Um, I mean, are, are only answered if you ask. Um, you ask and do not receive because you ask with wrong motives. See, just because we prayed something doesn't mean that God has to answer. Also, there are other things that get in the way of prayer. If you mistreat your spouse, for instance, God won't answer prayers. So anyways, uh, prayer is not for show or meaningless. Prayer is communication with God. The fill in the blank there is communication. Um, there's no really no right or wrong way to pray. Just don't yell at God. Don't don't blaspheme God. Don't talk down to God. Remember that he's in heaven and you are on earth. Um, remember that he's perfect and you're not. Remember that you don't understand, but he does. Um, in John and in Romans, uh, there's some passages there that I think are very important to pray and to, to remember. And the one in Romans, for instance, where it says that the Holy Spirit is intervening on our behalf uh, through prayer. And... Uh, and John 14 talks about a lot about the Holy Spirit and prayer in there. So anyways, um, prayer is communication with God. There's no right or wrong way. It's praying according to his character and will on his behalf. Um, that's why we pray in the name of Jesus. That's what that means. Uh, be led by the Holy Spirit in, in prayer. You know, um, God will lead you to pray for certain things. Pray for biblical things. Don't pray for things like, God, help me to be rich. Pray for things that actually have sub, you know, substance for the eternal. Um, prayers are answered, are not answered because of pride, 
Um, we'll talk about pride uh, in the next lesson. Lack of faith, unresolved conflicts. So if you don't believe, um, unresolved conflicts. If uh, if you have a tiff with someone and won't resolve it like God told you to, um, not submitting to authority. Um, you know, uh, not going to church because, hey, I just want to be my own authority, that kind of stuff. Um, talking down to policemen, that kind of stuff. <laughs> Submit to your authority. We'll talk about this next lesson, so I'm trying not to get too much into that. Um, if we have selfish motives, motives and desires, God won't answer. If we are apathetic, that means we don't really care. Eh, whatever, God save them or, you know, whatever, don't, I don't care. Um, and also if we don't ask. These are all reasons why God will not answer. Um, prayer works. Well, that's true, but it's not really a magical formula. Um, it's a thing that we must do, and it is beneficial, but to just say prayer works, yeah, it does work so long as God wants to answer that. I mean, once again, it's not a magical formula. You don't just utter the magical incantation and then, you know, God answers whatever thing you ask. It's, it's not like that. So Proverbs 15, 29, you know, and the Bible talks a lot about don't cease praying, don't, you know, uh, that, a lot of stuff like that. So just remember that God wants us to pray. 15, 29, the Lord is far from the wicked, but he hears the prayer of the righteous. He hears the prayer of the righteous. And we stand in Christ's righteousness. So remember that. Pray through. The fill in the bank is through. Pray in response to life. Whenever something happens, go to it with prayer. Oh, I lost my job. What's the first thing you do? Pray. I just had a fight with my spouse. What's the first thing I do? Pray. Respond to decisions, problems, and needs with prayer. Should I move? Should I get a different job? Should I this? Should I that? The other? Pray. Seek the Lord in all things. All things. Don't, have, don't get it in your mind that this is an area of my life that is mine. It's God's. Spend, excuse me, spend one to two hours um, just to maintain a a good, healthy, growing relationship with God. One to two hours in prayer. Um, what do you do in prayer? You listen. Uh, God will oftentimes speak if you just wait for a second and listen. Um, thank him, um, intercede, uh, pray. that means to pray for somebody else or on behalf of someone else. Um, you can't intercede for the dead, but you can intercede for the living. Um, you know, like maybe pray, paying, praying for maybe the president or Congress or whatever. It's a good example. Um, if you have an unsaved uh, family member, maybe pray on their behalf that God would, you know, have mercy on them, that he would... Um, bring opportunities by for them to accept him, that kind of stuff. Um, you confess sins during prayer, um, and you worship him during prayer. So who do you pray to? A lot of times people get real confused about this. Am I praying to Jesus or the Holy Spirit or the Father? You pray to God. God is one. There's only one God. You, you pray to God. Um, so don't, don't make this more complicated than it needs to be. Our problem with prayer is we think it's more complicated than it is. It's not about the length of the prayer, it's about heart. If you, it's not about having the perfect words. Now, I, I know, but didn't you just say pray to one to two, one to two uh, hours? That's for your benefit. I'm not saying legalistically, like you have to pray one to two hours, I'm, but it's for your benefit. Prayers aren't about the length. You know, let's say you want to pray for food. You don't have to sit there and pray for like 15 minutes for the food. You can just say, Lord, thank you for this food. Amen. That's it. It doesn't have to be real showy. Go to prayer with the mindset, I'm in it for the long run. What This thing that I'm praying for, I'm in it for the long run. Lord, I, I'm praying for you to do something in Chula Rosa. And tomorrow I'm going to pray that too. Don't get in this mindset that if he doesn't answer in the next five seconds, I'm just done praying. When you go down for prayer, you know, when you come into the, into the front of the church for prayer, anything like that, don't just go up and, and pray for like 30 seconds da, 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 and then leave. Pray and just hang out. Just hang out. You'd be surprised how quick God is to answer us and how, how much he wants to talk to us if we would just slow down for a second and listen. Um, 
and this obviously builds perseverance so don't stop seeking don't stop seeking God and seek earnestly don't leave when you're done but when you're done go to prayer with an agenda and don't leave till it's done go to prayer on a mission make that mission successful you go you go you pray and you stay until the job is done emotions don't dictate faith or truth I know sometimes oh well, I'm, I'm having doubts yeah in a way you're having emotions that are maybe confusing you maybe you feel tired maybe you feel depressed or whatever but emotions don't dictate faith or truth I may feel like God made God will never answer me but that doesn't mean that God will never answer me I may feel like God may never answer me but I will still put my trust in him and I will still live his way and I will still submit my life to him and I will get through the struggle and I will be, uh, and I will get back to a place of trusting in him stronger so that takes us to the idea of fasting. Now, in, in Isaiah 58, it talks about real fasting. And it talks about um, how it's about the heart, not about the show. And in Matthew chapter 6, he talks about um, fasting. Don't do it just to get everybody to look at you. Um, in its most basic form, we looked at this in the last class, but voluntary abstinence from food and things. And it's combined with scripture, reading the Bible, and, and prayer. Uh, it's done for a specific reason at a specific time. Um, maybe you just lost a child. Maybe you just want to get closer to God. Maybe whatever. Um, the lack of food causes a stronger spiritual focus. You, your, your physical aspects get numbed. Now you might say, I can never do this. Well, here's the thing. It's going to take time and patience and practice. Because And if you mess up on a fast, get up and, try, and, and keep trying. Don't just give up. Okay? Because you're used to eating whenever you want, whatever you want. And when you don't eat, your body says, oh, I'm going to die. You're not going to die. You're going to be okay. You'll get through this. Um, but then after those hunger pains and, and the, that period that you're just sitting there thinking about how hungry you are, I just can't think about it, but I'm just so hungry. After that, there comes a time um, when you just get this heightened sense of, of, of God. Sometimes it takes days. And then if you... If you don't exercise, your your energy isn't going to di digesting food, and it's not going to make making your body more more physically fit. It is focusing on on your 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 spiritual time. It will make your prayer more beneficial. Um, so you won't die, but however, do seek medical medical counsel before you. you some people genuinely do need to eat every couple of hours, or they need to maybe eat sweets to, you know, for the blood uh, blood sugar levels and all that. Um, remember that hunger pains will eventually pass. This too will pass. Um, remember that your flesh, your body naturally fights for itself. It, it naturally is going to think, I need this. It'll be okay. Um, your study and prayer will become clearer, but just stick with it. If you can just get past the hump. Fasting doesn't excuse you to live foolishly. The phone in the blank there is foolishly. Glorify God always. Just because you're fasting doesn't make you a super Christian. Fasting starts inside and moves out, not outside moving in. It's not a task. It's not about a to-do list. It starts in your heart and it moves out. It's not a mandatory obligation that you fulfill and then scratch off the list of good things. I fasted, so I'm a good person. It's, God, I just, I just want more of you. I just need more of you. I'm going to fast. See what I mean? That's the, that's the way, the progression of that. Fasting should be a lifestyle of moderation, prayer, and service. Um, you shouldn't be a glutton. You shouldn't be greedy. You shouldn't lust. It's a lifestyle. And you should have a lifestyle of prayer. You, have a, you should have a lifestyle of serving others. Turn a need into a motivation for fasting. Do you, do you lack direction in your life? Do you feel like you just need to grow more? Fast. It's a great, uh, great practice. Uh-oh. What did I do here? Okay, hold on. I lost my place. I, I hit something. Okay, yeah, there we are. Fast for spiritual alertness. Oh, whoops, I missed one of the fill in the blanks here. Turn a need into motivation. Motivation is the fill in the blank. 
So that takes us to some reasons for uh, fasting. Pray, uh, fast for spiritual alertness so that you'd be more um, more mature, spiritually speaking. Uh, you fast if you need God's will in your life. You, you, you fast for um, if you're just stuck in a sin and you're trying to get past it. You fast if um, fast for the work of God. I mean, if you think that you're, if you're getting ready to do something for God, you know, you, you should probably fat, go into that time with fasting. Um, fast for deliverance. If you, if there's something that, there's just a sin that's really got its grip on you. Fast. Uh, you fast to humble yourself. If you're struggling with pride, we'll look at pride in the next lesson. Um, fast is a part of worship. You just really want to honor God. You just really would just want more of Him. Um, if you're in a time of deep sorrow, uh, death, for instance. Um, fasting is a uh, is a response that a lot of times people will have. Um, you fast to get on God's page. The film the blank is page, not to get God to get on your page, not to get God to do what you want. It's not to impress others. It's not to achieve selfish purposes. You go without so others can have. The film the blank there is others or another, so another can have. Give your food, time, and money, and self to others. The whole idea of fasting is getting away from me and getting into God. When we seek the Lord, he responds. The word there is responds. Jeremiah 29, 13 talks about that. You will seek me and you will find me. Um, the Lord desires for us to earnestly and wholeheartedly seek him. So the fill in the blank there is wholeheartedly seek him continually. He always wants us to be in a place of earnestly and wholeheartedly seeking him. Always. Um, Luke 11 and 18 talk a lot about uh, prayer and fasting and seeking God. So uh, I hope that this has kind of maybe encouraged you in some areas. And I don't want you to get the idea that um, worship and, and, and prayer and fasting are supposed to be some kind of um, just legalistic uh, to-do list. Really, I know it sounds maybe a little bit like, yeah, that's just not for me. But these things are for everybody. And when you do them, it won't be so intimidating, and you'll start realizing how much you needed to do it. So if you have any questions, please comment them, post them in the comments below, and I will do my best to answer them. And the next